Pardon? Okay, wonderful. Again, welcome. I'm Kelly Eubanks of Key Concrete and Construction. We appreciate you being here tonight. And we are going to get our program started. If you will join me for a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we appreciate having this opportunity to gather together to learn about the watershed and everything, all of the great uh, changes that are coming with the watershed. We appreciate the blessings that you've bestowed upon this community and all of the communities within the watershed. We thank you for a productive meeting this evening. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And if you would now join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we will have acknowledgements. I'd like to thank Mayor Franklin and Chief of Staff Valley. They are unable to be here this evening. They are at an economic development conference, but they send greetings and they've been very involved in this process and we will continue to work together as we move into uh, the further planning of the watershed process. Would also like to acknowledge the superintendent, Dr. McGee. We thank you for uh, having us today in the schools. And I'd like to also recognize Dr. Charlotte Parham and Mr. Charlie Williams, who are part of this team, who were with the students all day today, uh, talking about the watershed, talking about the work that we're doing in the watershed and why conservation is so important. And the students were each given information to take home to their parents. So appreciate this comprehensive and integrated a public outreach effort. It's very important. So thank you for that. I'd also like to recognize Justice of the Peace, Martin Rawls. Mr. Rawls, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your presence this evening. Would also like to recognize Arkansas Black Mayors Association. And I'm not sure if Mr. Uh, Jalen Black is here. Hello, Mr. Black. Thank you so much for being here. And we also have members of the Arkansas Black Mayors Association that are present with us online. So thank you for being here this evening. I believe I saw a lead consultant, uh, Lee Farmer on. Kenneth Lee, I'm sorry. Okay, and I won't go through all of the names, but thank you, ABMA, for being on. And we also have members of NRCS, and NRCS, for those of you that are not aware, stands it stands for National Resources Conservation Service. And so NRCS and ABMA are sponsoring this project, and our local sponsors are uh, Mayor Franklin. Okay. Have I left anybody out? Are there any other elected officials here this evening? Yes. And I would be remiss if I did not mention our conservation district who is represented here. Our district conservationist is here, Ms. Benjamin. Thank you so much for being here along with Mr. Theartree Griffin. Thank you for being here. And I'd also like to give acknowledgement to our ambassadors who are local members of our team that are part of our comprehensive community outreach. So thank you for all of your efforts. Okay, let's get into our program. So the last time we stood before you, we were in the scoping phase. We had our scoping meeting back in October that was at Lakeview High School. We talked to you about the next steps and those steps were taking us into a phase of 
additional information gathering, completing the H and H model and all all that it means is that we have a model that predicts the movement of water in and out of the watershed. So we were developing that model. We were validating the model. We had multiple boots on the ground efforts where we came out into the watershed, walked the watershed, walked neighborhoods of known flooding so that we could validate our findings within that model. Those activities have taken place since you last saw us. And so what you're going to hear tonight is an overview of our preliminary findings. And you'll hear me say preliminary, and you'll hear Philip say preliminary over and over again because they are preliminary. Our preliminary findings where we've mapped out where these flooding events are happening, the high water marks, and some potential works of improvement that can be put into place to address these the flooding issues. Once we walk through this, we'll give you a chance to ask questions. Uh, we will. We also have some handouts, some 11 by 17. If you did not pick those up, please pick them up because it'll give you something to take home where you can find yourself on the map, your neighborhood, and you can see if there are works of improvement that are being evaluated for uh, your area. And with that, does anyone have any questions about what we're gonna cover this evening? Okay, wonderful. And thanks again for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Philip Massier of Olson. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, if we can go ahead and move to the next slide then. Uh, just a reminder that, um, like I say, even though we're we're here in Helena, West Helena, and we're looking at flooding here, we're also looking at flooding over a large watershed. This, um, this we're up at the, uh, the Helena, West Helena is at the very tip top of the watershed, the area enclosed in green there. And this watershed extends uh, at, all the way down past, uh, well, you see all the different communities in there, but it extends south past uh, Crumrod, Melwood, that area, uh, all the way down to really kind of where the, about where the levees for the Mississippi River and the White River come together, kind of in that area. So so we've got a, a big area to cover. It's about 187,000 acres. Um, and, and like I said, it includes a, 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 a big area. So we're just, we've got a, and that comes into play when we look at things, we've got to cover a big area, but we've also got to drill into detail in, in certain places to um, to be able to really find solutions that work. And so that's kind of with the stage where we're at now. So we'll go ahead and look at the next slide. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and advance one more then. So I'm gonna, uh, the other thing I wanted to do is, is to kind of look at the area um, you know, we, we've talked, if you've been to some of the other public meetings, you've heard us say that, okay, there are multiple watersheds with different teams looking at them in the Helena, West Helena area. So tonight we'll be talking about the one on the right, the Long Lake, the Long Lake Bayou, Little Bee Bayou watershed, and that dark red line uh, that goes up the one side and then comes through the middle of the, the screen there, that's the, the watershed boundary. And I know you probably can't read all the street names, but like say up there in the kind of the northern part, you got Ridgemont Drive that to give you a little uh, area of kind of frame of reference where we are here tonight in uh, the high school world. This high school, we're located in the the uh, Lick Creek, Big Creek watershed where we're, where we're sitting right now. Uh, the high school and, and as well as the uh, like the Phillips Community College, that's that's all on the west side in the Lick Creek, Big Creek watershed. If you have any information on that, uh, we'll be happy, to, you want to give us that information tonight, we'll be happy to submit that uh, to the ICONIC team. Uh, the, the two team consulting teams have been coordinating on different things, and, and so we can we can get in, any information to them. But I did want to just kind of give you um, an idea of kind of where that divide was. It goes, it extends um, down, like I say, just a little bit east of where we are right now, extending southward, and it comes out along, uh, what is that? Uh, I can't read the street name there from here, but along Highway 185 and 242. And then from there, the watershed boundary, of course, goes down into the farmland and extends south. But I wanted to kind of give you an idea just here in town where the watershed boundary was. Next slide. Okay, so at this point forward, I'm going to be working off the, the, uh, 
uh, the handouts. Charlie, do you mind grabbing some of those and bring them in here? Bringing them in here. Um, so, uh, what we're just what we're doing here is showing you specific places where we're look we're evaluating proposed works of improvement. And so the I know I cut off the legend here. It'll show up on your on your printed handout. But the green lines are open ditches that we're looking at improving. Now, some of those places, there's going to be an existing ditch there that just means maybe we need something a little bit larger or uh, you need to be kind of dug out and regraded a little bit. And then the red lines um, are the uh, pipes and culverts that, that we're looking at as, as well. <coughs> so I'm, I'm not going to go through each individual one, but... Um, so so the area that you're looking at here on the screen, that's the, so you've got three, let me go back up, you got three handouts, um, you know, one for kind of the, the northern part of Helena, West Helena, one for Helena Crossing, and then one for Elaine. And I apologize, we didn't get those labeled, they're all labeled just proposed improvements. Uh, but if you can find the one that's for the, the northern area here, uh, we're, and we're going to start with the northern half of that, um, of that area. And like I say, we've got some, you can, uh, well, you can divide part of the, the Helena drainage area by Walker Street. You can see that running east and west on the, towards the bottom of the screen there. And uh, for any of you who live right around here, you know that, that Walker Street's about 10 feet above the, the, the grade on, on uh, either side. So it kind of separates the, the drainage uh, north of there, the, the water drains towards that pump station and, and floodgate that's uh, up around the park. It's actually right, would it'd be just, just off the, kind of at the top of the screen here. We don't have that mark there. And so what we're looking at are some improvements there to help get the water to that floodgate and pump station. Uh, so those, just a number of different, uh, um, again, most mostly channel improvements there. And those aren't connected there because we've got existing channels in there. So what we're looking at is improving some of those arterial channels to get the water to the, the existing channels that are functioning, that are flowing towards that um, pump station and floodgate on the north side of town. And then, um, so I'm just going to go through and move this quickly, but, it, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to stop me and we can go back and, and like I said, I can point things out on, on your handouts if need be. So uh, let's, we'll just keep moving to the next slide here. So the next slide will be the the uh, kind of the the southern half, if you will, of that uh, same handout. So we're still on that same page. And again, uh, you know, this is intended to look at everything kind of south of Walker Street. So so here we've got drainage coming. You know, some of the drainage comes from the west, coming off the hills, off Crowley's Ridge, and you know, some of that water, like the water that comes down Springdale Road, you know, a good bit of that, at least under you know, what I would say maybe normal, more frequent rains is captured by uh, what the Corps of Engineer calls the Walker Street culvert. And that's uh, got an opening that's uh, north of Walker Street and just east of College Street. There's an opening there that catches that big channel, surface channel that's coming down the side of Springdale Road. And, you know, again, carrying a lot of, uh, if I, I'm sorry, I don't have a map that shows the whole drainage area that drains to that location, but it's a pretty good bit, of, pretty good bit of area. And so that, um, like I said, that's existing structure in place that, that we've got included in the model. And so that, that captures, whoops, excuse me, that captures water and funnels it underneath through that uh, tunnel that's underneath Walker Street. I call it a tunnel. Uh, and it goes through the Mississippi River, River levee. And so we've got uh, some of the water that's that's being uh, dealt with that way, but there's obviously still a little bit more water coming down uh, both Springdale Road as well as some other places a little bit farther to the south. Um, so kind of on the west edge of the map you see here, you know that's where we've got uh, some some places come uh, some of the runoff coming off the Crowley's Ridge there that that's that we're trying to intercept, and then also on the eastern side there you see some of those east west ditches that. That need to be improved or, or added. Those are again just places where, uh, you know, we're just talking with Ken Wyland, one of the local engineers here, has got a lot of experience with the drainage issues. He was telling us about some of the arterial uh, ditches that were just having trouble getting water to those main ditches that actually do function. So again, that's that's part of what the effort is there on the east side and on the west side. You know, that's more of a uh, more drainage to. Um, 
you know, again, capture what's coming off Crowley's Ridge. And you see a number of culverts there. Again, those are not, you don't see them connected on this drawing simply because we've got existing ditches there. We just want to make sure that those culverts aren't being a constriction there that's causing flooding. Uh, let's go. So at this point, uh, like I say, stop me if you have any questions. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So the next slide, now I shift gears to your, to your next handout, which will be the Helena Crossing handout. And again, like I said, not, not labeled well, but uh, Hope you can identify it from what's on the screen there. So uh, this is an area that um, particularly the area of Lithicum Street, and I apologize that the green line <laughs> covered up the, the street name, but I know Pastor Robinson's here and he knows uh, we were looking at the handout, so he knows where he is. But but just to, for your frame of reference, like say there's uh, MLK Boulevard at the top of the screen, Highway uh, 20 and, and the 44 split there, 44 going off to the southwest, 20 continuing on south, so that gives you frame of reference where we are, that um, there's a channel coming in on the very right-hand side of the screen. That's the channel that that's basically draining most of Helena. Most most of the drainage from Helena is coming down that channel. And so it kind of bends to the, to the uh, uh, southwest a little bit, uh, goes underneath Highway 20. And after it goes underneath Highway 20, it starts, if you get a big enough rain, it starts overflowing into a low area that creates backwater that keeps some of that Helena crossing uh, area from from uh, from draining, and so that's that's been causing a problem for a long time and and pretty persistent problems as as well. So, so we're, one of the things we're looking at here is is just looking at, at you know cleaning out some of the the drainage pathways. You know, at the, at the end of very end of Lithicum Street, the water should be flowing. Um, you know, to the southwest on with Lithicum Street, it tries to do that. It just can't go anywhere. So we need to, you know, clear out some of that area. And of course, now, once we get beyond the, the end of Lithicum Street, we're onto private property. That's, and also outside the city limits. So that's one of those things that we've, we've mentioned it in the past is that we've got to get cooperation from local landowners. We've got to have, it's not just the city, it's the county as well, uh, as in terms of being sponsors. And anytime you, we, um, uh, Anything that's built or constructed through this project has to be maintained by the local sponsor. That's a real important thing, and, and we've we've been talking with our local sponsors about that, and and they understand that. But that's something we all need to keep in mind, and we, and we want to design things so that they can be maintained easily. That's that's a, a big objective here. So, uh, and then also on the north side of of Highway 44, there um, we're looking at you've got water that's kind of coming to the south there towards the road. And if you get a big enough rain, it's going to go over the road, but we're trying to control that and, and make sure that uh, some of that needs to be diverted down to the southwest, which is why that, that line extends farther down. Some of it will come underneath Highway 44. And again, we need to provide a good pathway for that as well. So we're, we're in the evaluation stage right now. We don't have the answers for, I can't tell you, you know, okay, if we, if we do all that, if we clean it out to this degree, you know, how much is that going to lower the water levels? Uh, we're still, that's what we're working through. But we wanted to show you guys what we're, what we're working on. Uh, so, uh, okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. So at this point, I'm going to uh, jump down to Elaine because that's, again, that's part of our watershed. It extends, you know, pretty far south. So this is the northern half lane, and this is your third uh, switch switch handouts, the, the printouts to get to that uh, so you can see that. And uh, so here uh, we were, uh, uh, and like like Kelly said, we've had boots on the ground. We've been fortunate that, that folks in, in the Helena West Helena community, uh, Mr. Griffin and others from, from the NRCS have showed us around the rural areas, as well as um, Mayor Gilbert and, and her staff have showed us around um, uh, Elaine and some of their issues. So we're, we're real thankful for folks uh, helping us out, giving us some local information here. But this, I, I'm going to start here over on the west side of the 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 uh, because that's the downstream end. So most of Elaine is draining to well, pretty much all of Elaine is is draining to the west, and the area that you're looking at here is going to drain out along Highway 20 and try to flow northwest right along the, the road ditch on Highway 20 out to uh, that uh, bayou which, or slough, Go, Govan Slough. And we looked at that and it's it's pretty well overgrown. That's where some work needs to be done. And, you know, going back to what I just said about, you know, needing uh, different sponsors, 
you know, Highway 20 is a, obviously a state highway, so you've got the State Department of Transportation involved there to do any type of work on that ditch. And if we most likely, we'll probably need to enlarge it to where it goes a little bit on the private land. So we need permission from the, the private landowner. Um, and, and so there's, like I say, things to be done there. And, and again, it needs to be designed where it can be maintained easily. So that's the, the I said we'd start there because if we can get that clear, we got to get that cleared before water has anywhere to go um, with any of the rest of the water in the lane. So we've got some other ditches identified and some culverts there. Um, yeah, I know you could, in, in most towns, small towns or big towns too, really, and, and for that matter, you could you could probably say, well, Evercold over needs to be cleaned out a little bit, and and um, that may be the case. But we're trying to focus on the the areas that are in in most need. So those those are the things that we identified there. And again, they're not connected there because we've got some existing uh, drainage structure in in between those uh, lines. I go to the next slide. We'll shift down to the south end of. Of Elaine. And so here you've got water that's instead of going to the northwest, we're coming to the southwest. Um, just a, a culvert up there, uh, as, as well as some area right there where College Avenue uh, comes out. We've got an area that, uh, that we were shown that has uh, some beaver activity. And, and of course, there again, that gets back to we want to build design things that, I mean, you can't stop beavers. We all know that but we want to design it to where it can be maintained as easily as possible. And, and, you know, where at least there's um, minimal, we don't want to, we don't want to make things any easier for the beavers than, than what it is already. So that's what we're looking at there. And then farther down, if you follow that ditch on down, you see a couple of culverts. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe both of those are on County roads. We just want to make sure again, we're not, we don't have constrictions that are causing flooding there. So Okay, and that's all the maps I have, but go ahead and uh, go ahead and move to the next slide there. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Kelly and she'll give you uh, an overview of kind of where we're going from here. So what are our next steps? Well, we will continue to work through the alternatives that are being evaluated right now. And what does that mean? Well, it's an it's a inter iterative process. It's a process that involves your feedback as a community, a process that involves the local leadership in the communities that we are we're seeing uh, flooding events occur. It's a process that includes economists, where we are considering the cost benefit analysis. And it's not just based on dollars. It's also based on things like social justice. These are important components of the planning process and selection of alternatives. And so as we go through this process, we will end up with what is called a sponsor preferred alternative. And that is the alternative that will be the ultimate recommendation that is presented uh, to move forward into the design uh, phase. So I think the other point I, I want to make is when we start talking about the sponsor preferred alternative, just know that you saw multiple works of improvement. You'll hear that term throughout this planning process. You saw multiple potential works of improvement from these three handouts and the slides. So, you know, one alternative may end up being, uh, we have several works of improvement that are part of that one alternative. So each work of improvement is not a standalone alternative on its own. So the next time that you see us in a formal setting, it will be uh, during an event uh, where we get public feedback on the water planning uh, document. There will be what is called a notice of availability. And it's a notification that's basically telling the public this watershed plan is complete and we're ready for you to review it and give additional feedback. So between now and then, we'll continue to request feedback. We have multiple means of you providing feedback. So that can be through the email address that we have set up for Helena, West Helena Watershed. We have a watershed hotline where you can call the 188 number. Actually, 
Could we move to the next slide so we can show those things? There we go. So you can call that 188 number and I encourage you to call to do one of several things. Call when there is a rain event where you experience flooding. It's important for us to capture that. And in cases where we can, we send out an individual to actually measure that. Call if you have had flooding and you've had documentation in the past and you need and you just want us to know about that. Call and share those details. So leave your name, number, and we will call you back and get any additional details that are necessary for that to be documented. And lastly, call if you have ideas, whether they are constructive criticism regarding the works of improvement that we are evaluating, additional ideas that maybe we haven't thought of, additional neighborhoods where flooding is occurring. And I'll give you an example. Just through this process, we've been able to identify the Lithicum area, Meadowbrook area, that neighborhood. Uh, we know Helena Crossing and then various uh, neighborhoods within Elaine Crossing. So within a lane, excuse me. So it's really important that the community share with us what's going on. I would also encourage the farming community. If you are experiencing flooding on your property, I encourage you to please reach out to us. I know that the conservation district has made you aware of these meetings and I know it's it's planting season. So you're probably planting right now and you didn't have a chance to come out, but we encourage you to please uh, reach out to us at your earliest convenience. If you have flooding, we will definitely want to make sure that we get the opportunity to address it with this project. Okay, so that concludes today's formal presentation. But absolutely, come on up. Um, we're going to be here. We're going to stay because we would love to interact with you, answer any questions that you have about the content that was presented today, as well as the handouts where we have the proposed works of improvement. And thank you again. And feel free to have some more uh, chips or pizza. <laughs> and Philip has a few other things to add. <laughs> okay. Hey, I, sorry. I, when I, this is what happens when I don't put everything on PowerPoint. Is is forgot to mention a couple things. Is all the things you see on these handouts are proposed structural alternatives, and other thing that part of this program that NRCS has requires us to, which we want to do anyway, to look at non-structural alternatives. Non-structural alternatives or any anything that's not going to reduce the water levels. Um, it's like saying, okay, we we can't. Uh, economic or feasibly affect water levels, you know, how do we deal with it as a result? That, and that could mean something like flood proofing your house, raising your home, I guess that's a form of flood proofing, or possibly relocation of residents. Um, and, and I talked with uh, Pastor Robinson's here, we talked about that. I know uh, that that thing has been mentioned, uh, that that issue of or possible re relocation has been mentioned um, for that area. But um, the one thing I mentioned to Pastor Robinson, which I've, which we uh, want to remind everybody that um, is involved in this, is the consulting team does not make those decisions. That's made on a local level. You know, our job is to provide information on the different alternatives. We are required to do, like as Kelly said, that uh, benefit cost analysis. And so, like I say, we'll, we'll pro provide um, information on the alternatives. And then, like I say, at the end of the day, it's, it, uh, it's a local decision to do that. The other thing I forgot to mention is we are looking at some some uh, uh, or we'll be looking at some other alternatives in, in some of the rural areas. Uh, I just didn't have that on the on the screens today, but I know like uh, Mr. Griffin had showed us that one area like west of uh, excuse me east of Elaine where where some of that flooding is occurring. You kind of pointed to a location where um, you know people have talked about the possibility of maybe a pumping station. Uh, so we'll we'll look at that. We we realize that uh, a pumping station is expensive. Not sure who we could get. You know, not not just to build it. I mean, NRCS would build it through this program, but somebody's got to be the local sponsor to, to operate it and maintain it. So when a pump goes out, you know, who's going to replace that? I'm sure that's quite pricey. Um, so that's that's a consideration. But if that is if that's what alleviates the flooding, we want to at least identify it and see where 
things can go from there. So that's that's what we're looking at. The other thing is, um, and I didn't have it uh, marked on the the uh, handouts simply because this was you know just um, the handouts were just focused on the the channel and and uh, culvert pipe improvements. Is that we'll be uh, at least looking at the possibility of a pump station just on the south side of Helena maybe in the vicinity of where the 49 bridge goes across the river, just something to kind of pull some of that water out. And like I say, if you can pump it over into the Mississippi river, you kind of get rid of it, so to speak, you're not routing it on down. And, and whereas some of the uh, things we're looking at in the Helena crossing area is some of the things I mentioned on here, those channel improvements that, that helps the water flow, but, when it helps the water flow in one place, you know what happens downstream. It gets there quicker. So it's like, well, now we got to prove that. And, and then that, that kind of can kind of keep going for a little ways and, and uh, can be a little bit problematic as opposed to if you're pumping it out of the watershed, you're, you're like I say, you're uh, not having to route that on down the stream. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll repeat the question here. Oh, you got it, Mike. Okay. Thank you. My name is Pastor Danny Robinson, and uh, I really appreciate what I've learned here in the uh, Fifth and Street area because that's where I am, that's where I've lived for 30 years. And it looks to us, I guess any, anybody can say probably they get in the buck of all the flooding, you know, when they get put out. But we really get a good deal of it. I have many handouts over the years that I have stored up. That will give you pictures of how we've been flooded out uh, over the years, and uh, but I've learned a lot these two moments regarding this Indian Street situation. And I, I appreciate you guys for that, and I will share this because we have community meetings. I um, I sort of like I have community meetings with my group down there quite frequently because we work together on trying to keep the water high. Pool. We don't dig the ditches. Did a job to dig a ditch, but I have a machine. Now I've done this kind of work all my life for the last 40 some years. I've retired now, but I still take care of our community. And uh, I was—I heard you say something about the pump station because I know our challenge is closed now, maybe, but it always felt like if we get a pump station in the right place, the pump water on over to the Mississippi River. Is that what you're speaking of? Yes, sir. That, that would be just a little bit upstream of where you live. Uh, again, like I say, when I was when I was talking to you earlier, that that uh, channel that's coming down kind of out of Helena, and then like it comes underneath Highway 20, and then just goes south of your area. That's kind of the the model is showing that's overflowing to the on, on the north side and causes some backwater that prevents Lithicum Street from draining. That's the, and and the idea is that if we can uh, put a pump station a little bit upstream of where you are. Um, like I say, if you if you go from where that bayou comes under Highway 20, if you follow it upstream to where it goes under Highway 49, the the uh, where that's going across the highway that's going across the river, kind of somewhere about in that area. I mean, you want the pump station located somewhat close to there. You don't want to locate the pump station farther away and then have to you know build a bunch of pipes to to get it over the levee. But uh, that's that's kind of what we had in mind. And again, you know, we're, this is kind of conceptual uh, thing stage right now and, and again uh if if that provides good relief for the flooding we'll identify that and and see where we can go with the whole idea of, of, of funding to to build it as well as you know maintaining and operating it that's that's a huge hurdle but what we're going to start with is with that how much would that actually affect the flooding that's where we'll start with i don't know what they've done recently but over the last years i guess for some reason, the flooding in our area has really improved. I don't know. I, I know a couple of big farmers that I that they've been talking with and work with. Uh, they want to bring their machinery down. They do a lot of work. Now. They work with us real, real well. So I, I, we've had a lot of great improvements. I just said. In other words, a lot of water come down, but it moves on out. It moves on out for the good, or as it used to have for the required. I was told that, you know, some of the creeks are sealed up, different things, you know, like beavers, you got overloaded with beavers. Thank you very much. And thank you for your input there. We appreciate that.
And that was that was the only other, the only other thing I had. I don't know, Kenneth Lee, or if you're still uh, with us, uh, I don't know if you if I could put you on the spot and get you to make a comment. There was a there was a question earlier before the the program actually started, just about the whole idea of people have heard about you know programs. Oh, we're going to come study the area. We're going to study the area, and then nothing's ever built. This is a fully funded project, and so. I don't know if Kenneth, if you're still there, if I could, um, uh, I don't know if you're still on the, the line, if I could get you to maybe unmute if you can and, and just maybe speak to that whole thing and just kind of describe uh, the, I mean, nothing's absolutely certain, but just kind of mention that the talk about the whole part about the funding and the fact that this is a fully funded project. Uh, 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 Kenneth, you'll have to unmute, unmute yourself. I think Josh sent you a uh, opportunity to unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, you're unmuted. Uh, let's see. Hang on just a second. We'll see if we can get your volume turned up here. Okay, go go ahead, Kenneth. Or okay, can ready. can you hear me? Can you hear me, Philip? Hang on just a second, Kenneth. We're getting you there. We're trying to get your volume where everyone in the room can hear you. Try, try again. Try, try again. Try. Okay. Okay. Can you okay. hear me? Okay. Can you hear me, Philip? Yeah, go, go ahead, Kenneth. We'll. I, I think we I can. Think we, can I, we can barely hear you. Okay, uh, you were correct, Philip. This is a, a fully funded project. Uh, it's funded through the planning phase, the, um, the design phase, and the construction phase. So it is fully funded. Uh, once we get through the planning process, you know, we should be moving to the design process and once that is completed we should be moving to the construction process so they shouldn't be worried about whatever alternative that that the sponsors choose they shouldn't be worried about them not getting accomplished Th thanks kenneth appreciate that um and like i said i did uh, mention beforehand that and just to remind everybody else, the NRCS from the national office is pushing us to get this planning phase uh, finished soon so that they can obligate the money for the design phase uh, quickly and, and with certainty. I'll just add the additional point of our timeline now is looking to be uh, August for having the watershed plan completed. And so again, the next time you'll see us in a formal setting will be once the notice of availability has been issued and you'll get an opportunity to see the completed watershed plan. But in the meantime, we'll look forward to continue to work with you as a community on potential solutions to the flooding problem. And we really appreciate the level of involvement that this community has had from day one. So thank you. And we're looking forward to a successful planning uh, process that culminates with us moving into the design phase. Okay, any questions, any other questions or comments? Yes. Excuse me, would you please state your name? Okay, you can come. Nate Todd, I'm the regional vice president of Key Concrete Construction. What Mr. Williams and Dr. Perham did today, they educated a generation of Helena, West Helena citizens on watershed. That's the beauty, one of the beauties of this project. Now, 
when they become on the city council uh, quorum court, they'll have knowledge of how cities work and how water works and how important it is. So I want to thank Mr. Williams and Ms. Dr. Perham. And you saw those kids. Those kids were practicing and now they have the nutrition. A lot of things are coming out of this project. So I want to thank Key Country Construction. Philip, thank you. Thank the whole team. I'm just happy, just in peace, Pastor, to be in Arkansas. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. If there are no further comments or questions, this concludes our program for the evening. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great night.